the gunshot went off and all the kids were ready lined up for the race. They heard the shot and they ran as fast as they could. In that race, the fastest kid in the race, James. Everyone was cheering for James. Come on, James! Come on! And in the audience, there was one person who was cheering. Come on, son! You can do it! He was cheering for the slowest kid in the race who placed last. Rafiha. Do you, those master of the evening, have someone that cheers for you unselfishly, unconditionally? Do you, ladies and gentlemen, have someone that cares for you and loves you unselfishly, unconditionally? For all the years that I've known myself, it has always been that person in the crowd who cheered for me, my father. And I've known him for being this for all my life. I remember growing up as a child, he was there to cheer for me when I came last. I remember him being there to cheer for me when I came up on stage for the first time and I couldn't speak that, those few words on stage. He's always been there for me cheering. He's always been my one-man cheering squad. And I loved him for this. But growing up as a child, I reached one stage in my life where I started walking on this thin line between growing up and being a child. And when I was walking on that line, somehow I did not like that one man cheering squad cheering for me anymore. I was at one of the best days of my life, an important event of Toastmasters. I went up on stage and I stood there before I could speak the first word came the scream. Come on, son! You can do it! People looked back at him. I felt embarrassed. I did not know what to say. I just came off from the stage after giving my speech. I didn't say anything to him. But it continued this way. And every time I came back on stage, the sergeant at arms actually announced that, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the speech contest, I kindly request you to please take out of the hall, screaming children and shouting fathers. Because everyone knew that if I was there on stage, my dad would shout louder than anyone else cheering for me. And one day, it happened. I went up on stage, he screamed as usual at the top of his voice, cheering for me. I came off on stage with the intention, with the anger, hurting him. I looked up to him, I went close to him, I looked him in the eyes and I said to him, you are an embarrassment to me. Did you realize the fact that all these years you've been an embarrassment? Did you realize the fact that you've never supported me because you were not supporting me, you were actually putting me down? I never want to see you again. Please, let me be. I pierced him with my words, with the intention of hurting him. And I left him in tears. But I knew I was satisfied with the fact that he's never going to come back there again. I went on with my journey as a speaker. I went on several stages. I conquered several contests. <coughs> I was a winner, I had my own cheering squad, I had my friends, I had my, my, my club mates, I had my own cheering squad now who cheer for me. And I reached that stage, when I reached the biggest stage that I've ever been in speaking, I walked up onto the stage, I looked on my right, I looked on my left, my friends, my club mates, I looked at the audience, it was a huge audience. At that moment, I realized something. I realized that I was not ready. I looked again on my right, I looked again on my left. I was searching among the unfamiliar faces. Familiar face. That voice, <coughs> that cheer was 
was not there anymore. I looked at the audience and he was gone. For once in my life, I started to miss him cheering for me. All those embarrassing moments had suddenly gone away and I wanted him there more than ever. I decided not to go ahead that big day with my speech. Just when I was about to leave, my eyes stopped right at the end of the audience, in the corner, there he was. Why did he come back? He came back to embarrass me again. He's going to shout again. He's going to make a fool out of me. I went back again. I looked at him. But wait. He has tears in his eyes. He didn't come back to embarrass me. I looked into his eyes again. As if to say that I was sorry as if to tell him that I wanted him, as if to tell him to cheer for me again, to care for me again. And almost immediately, he understood what I wanted. Come on, son, you can do it! I heard him scream. My one-man cheering squad was back. My number one fan had come back. Ladies and gentlemen, do you have someone that cheers for you unselfishly and conditionally? Someone that loves you beyond <coughs> your strengths and your weaknesses? Or do you? Because if you do have someone, then let that someone be there for you in the crowd. And let that someone cheer for you. Let that someone come out with you with their trumpets and horns cheer for you, loud and proud, because if the cheering stops, the killing stops. Madam Toastmaster. Can we skip the break if you guys don't mind? Yes. Okay. Do you want to both skip the break? 